we literally have to remove this graphics card out of one of our office PCs to make this video. And honestly, I'm just trying to get rid of all of these overpriced graphics cards and Flippin' Friday is a perfect series to do that. All right, now we can start the video. All right, guys, welcome back to our 14th episode of Flippin' Friday. This is the first time that Brian and I are filming in this new set, and honestly, I'm just super excited to see how this turns out on camera. But for today's build, I paid $842 for this build, and we're gonna make some serious profit on this one. But even if you aren't a PC flipper, this is honestly just gonna be a really solid price to performance gaming PC build guide. So let's start building this thing. All right, so real quickly for the performance parts for the day. First up, we have the Ryzen 5 3600 CPU. I paid $135 for that used on Mercari. The motherboard it's plugged into is gonna be the MSI B450 Tomahawk, which I paid $63 for. The RAM, we got one of my favorites, the YOLO white two by eight gigabyte kit clocked at 3600 megahertz. That was $61, not on a deal or anything, just brand new on Amazon. And then finally, we have the graphics card that we just ripped out. I paid way too much money for this. I'm not even gonna tell you how much I paid, but this is the Gigabyte Aorus RTX 3060. Now, real quickly before we actually start building, today's episode is sponsored by Digital Chill Mart, which is exactly where I'll be activating Windows 11 for this exact build right here. But we'll talk more about them when we go to activate Windows on this gaming PC. Discount code ZTT is about to save us a ton of money. First up, we have our CPU, and this is the Ryzen 5 3600. Now, for most people, the 3600 doesn't make any sense at all in terms of pricing here in 2022. And the reason why it doesn't make a whole lot of sense is there's not a ton of deals on the 3600 right now. Oftentimes, sellers are asking for way higher than normal pricing on this, and it usually creeps up to close to the $200 mark where at that point, you might as well just buy a Ryzen 5 5600X. Now, I personally paid $135 for mine used off Mercari, which still isn't that great of a deal, but by buying that, I was able to buy a cheap B450 motherboard like this Tomahawk here. With the whole combo, the CPU and the motherboard, then it becomes pretty solid price to performance, but by itself, the 3600 doesn't make sense unless if you can get a really good deal on it. So already running into a quick hiccup, not a huge deal, but this WD SN570 from Western Digital is just obviously super ugly with the blue PCB. And I thought that this B450 Tomahawk came with one of those M.2 shields right there, but as you can see, it doesn't. So we definitely don't wanna leave this ugly blue PCB sitting there. So this is a really good example of why you should have these black M.2 heat sinks Obviously this could add some better cooling to your SSD if you need it. We don't need it for a low end SSD like this, but aesthetically these make a lot of sense to hang on to, especially if you're a PC flipper. I didn't like that sound. I've literally never had this happen before, but I just went to tighten down the Phillips screw on the M.2 SSD and the head, I don't know if we're gonna be able to focus in on here, but the head of the screw literally just screwed off. Like I did not put any ounce of muscle into that whatsoever, but the threads of the screw is now deep, deeply lodged in here. So I should be able to just remove this off and then we'll get a brand new standoff here, but definitely worth documenting. I've literally never had that happen to me before. I didn't actually have the correct standoff size, but I do have one more of these super super useful and clutch standoffs where instead of having to screw a screw in, it's just one of those plastic clips. So this is the last one I have. So now all we have to do is install that SSD, click it onto the screw right here, which maybe, maybe it'll go in, hold on. <laughs> if we're still rolling, it just clicked in there. That was supposed to be way easier than that. But instead of screwing it in, all I gotta do is slide over that little plastic tab and then it's good to go. So. A little bit of a, a fumble there, but our all black and not blue PCB SSD is now installed. Now we gotta do the CPU cooler. Yeah. 
While I was building, Brian, the videographer, actually mentioned, when are you gonna talk about the awkward, different color choices of all of these white products? So it's definitely worth mentioning, and unfortunately, this is just what happens with building white PCs sometimes, but you'll be able to see here that the white color profile or color temperature in the RAM is a little bit bluer compared to something like the white in the custom paint job of our CPU cooler. And then it's even a little bit cooler than the white of our Sama case. And you can even see a little bit of a difference between the white in these fans compared to the white in the case chassis. They're just different shades of white. And then we also have the Asia Horse cable extensions and those match up a little bit better with the creamier color of the CPU cooler and whatnot. So you'll be able to tell, it's gonna probably look a little bit worse on camera than in real life with all of these like lights pointed at us and whatnot. So unfortunately, I just don't really think that there's many ways to avoid this, uh, unless if you're using like the same brand of white uh, components over and over again, and you start to get used to which ones are warmer, which ones are cooler. But unfortunately, we're gonna have a white, off-white and a black build today. And now that we do have the case up here on the table, I wanna quickly talk about this. This is the Sama Z4 Steel All White Full ATX Size Case. And this is actually the second time I'm building with it. I just built recently over on the Thirsty Thursday live stream. I picked up two of these for $70 each, which for PC flipping is actually a really solid deal because it comes with four pre-installed white RGB fans. It's got like a nice minimal all white design, except for the white color issues that I just mentioned. We also have the cutout for some power supply vinyl action. And then finally, it has the cutout up here at the top for our GPU cables. That way we can just quickly route them. You guys know I always talk about that. But the problem with this, other than the colors, is this is a very, very cheap, flimsy case. And it doesn't feel sturdy at all. Uh, it's not a huge deal if you're PC flipping because that doesn't really matter. But what does matter is because this is so cheap, they don't want to spend an extra three cents on the material, but in the back, it has zero room for cable management. So I don't know if you can see the cutout here on the side of the case, but this is the only amount of room that you have for cable management. Otherwise, there's no sort of gap or anything. So using a power supply like we are today that is not modular at all is gonna be a little tough cable management you're gonna have to be dialed in with this case, but $70, all the features that I said, it's still good for PC flipping value, but you just gotta be aware of some of those downfalls. I just did the same exact mistake that I did when I built with this case on Thirsty Thursday. For whatever reason, this case does not come with standoffs installed in the ATX position. So don't install your motherboard until you have all of your standoffs installed. It's really frustrating, but some cases just do this, unfortunately. Whenever you do have a case like this that just has terrible cable management, and when you're using like I said, a non-modular power supply, I would really recommend doing what I'm doing here. And I call it pre-cable management. So I'm already zip tying uh, and Velcro strapping some of these cables down before that power supply even goes in there. If I was to put in the power supply first and then start cable management the entire thing, it would get a little tricky. So I'm just doing a little bit of tidying up before the power supply even comes into the PC. Another little fault of this case is, I actually experienced the same exact thing when I was building with this case on Thirsty Thursday, but the amount of gap that they give you up at the top to plug in that eight pin power connector is just too small where 
as you can probably see, I had to uninstall one of the motherboard screws to slightly bend the motherboard so I could fit that eight pin up and through there. So again, that's just like kind of amateur hour with this Sama brand of cases. It's not an absolute deal breaker. Again, we got some really good value out of it, but they just made a lot of little tiny mistakes like that that end up just being a frustrating building process. And finally, the last component that we have here today is the Gigabyte Aorus RTX 3060. And like I said in the intro, I paid a little bit too much money for it, but it wasn't as much as I thought. I paid $492 for it during the GPU shortage, which actually wasn't an awful deal. But now, obviously, that the GPU shortage is over, you can get these for around like $400. Some of them are even creeping into the 300. So you can definitely get more profit than I'm going to for this Flippin' Friday build. Keep your eyes peeled for those low prices on the 3060 and just low prices on graphics cards in general. Flippin' Friday isn't done yet. I don't wanna leave you guys hanging like I'm about to do with this PC that we pulled the 3060 out of. But now that the PC is built, let's plug it in and make sure that we get that BIOS splash screen. Make sure that I'm being transparent with you guys and all of these PC builds are actually getting to the BIOS and I'm not just faking it. So let's make sure that we installed everything correctly here. And then we'll go ahead and activate Windows as well while we're here. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. All right, so the PC is booting. We have all of the fans spinning and all the RGBs look good. And there we go. Uh, so we got our, uh, our Ryzen 5 3600 here. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and we can just press F1 to hopefully go into the BIOS. But so far it looks pretty good. All right, so we have finally successfully got to the BIOS here. And I wanna quickly show you guys the process of activating Windows 10 because our sponsor today, Digital Chill Mart, is definitely gonna help us out with that. Digital Chill Mart is definitely my favorite place to buy both Windows 10 and Windows 11 keys right now. Their website already has obnoxiously low prices, but when you use the discount code ZTT, that'll save you 50% off. And the best part about this website is that you get the code literally as soon as the payment goes through. Activating Windows is then super easy to do. After you get Windows fully installed, all you gotta do is press start, type in activation, enter a new key and boom, Windows is now activated and you're good to go. And then again, don't forget to use discount code ZTT to save 50%. And big thanks again to Digital Chill Mart for sponsoring today's video. But now let's check out this full parts list of this gaming PC and then we'll run some benchmarks. So here you have the full parts list. And like I said earlier, I am going to include a typical RTX 3060 price instead of what I paid for it a few months ago during the GPU shortage. I'm almost done with my shortage inventory, so I shouldn't need to give this disclaimer too much more from now on. But yeah, the final price should be sitting around that $850 mark. And since I believe you'll be able to sell a build like this around $1,100, that's gonna give you a very nice profit for a build like this. And just like usual, I had Sam whip up a quick benchmarking run, no gaming footage or anything, but here's the number for those of you that are interested in seeing what the Ryzen 5 3600 and RTX 3060 are capable of here in mid-2022. As always, this build will be sold over on my website, zackstechdrift.com, and this will be for sale during our next launch, which is July 1st, so be on the lookout for that. Hopefully you enjoyed this 14th episode of Flippin' Friday. Feel free to click the playlist that's on the screen now if you wanna see some of my other flips, but I'll catch you guys in the next video.